Hey everybody, so I just saw Melissa Vent, Mistress of Evil, directed by, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher his name because I think it's Swedish, uh, Yoshim, uh, Roning, Running, something, uh, starring Angelina Jolie, Elle Fanning, Michelle Pfeiffer, Harris Dickinson, Sam Riley, Chuatel Ejiofor, and Ed Skrine. I wish I had as many things to say about this movie as I did the first, because I think Melissa Vent 2014 is a garbage pile of a movie. But Mistress of Evil is marginally better. The story isn't nearly as weak, and as a whole it's significantly better, but there's still flaws. Not every character is super fleshed out. The motiva their motivations are frankly make no sense. Uh, everyone becomes an idiot at the end of the movie, and the story expects us to feel bad for characters we haven't been given a reason to care about for yet. Edge of Four sacrifices himself after about two minutes of screen time, and one of the fairies dies. Big whoop. They are fucking annoying and looked weird. It just it doesn't give you enough care time with these characters to establish a connection and establish a caring for them. I completely forgot. One of the villains dies in this movie. They don't even fucking show it. She gets knocked off a balcony, and I completely forgot the character even existed until now. It's just some of the shit they do in this movie is so boneheaded and stupid. It's just... You know... The villain's plan is so fucking convoluted in this movie. And it relies on everything that would not happen, should not happen, and would never happen to happen. And of course... It always happens and goes according to plan because it's a movie and because a movie needs to happen and story means to move forward. That's this entire movie. That's all it is. This needs to happen, so this happens. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get over something. But one of the biggest things with this movie that it did better in my opinion, and I know it's been five years, but the CGI in this movie has improved Tenfold. But the character designs are off-putting. A lot of time I couldn't wait for these characters much like them. And you know what? This is an attack at the little fairies. The little three fucking annoying, poorly animated, badly designed, superimposed faces on small bodies that is frankly uncanny and unpalatable to look at. They're ugly, they're disgusting, and every time they were on screen, I could not wait for them to get off. At least in the first one, they had something to do. In this movie, they have nothing to do. At all. Nothing. Zip. Nada. And remember how the first one is narrated pretty solidly throughout to give it some nice narrative structure throughout the entire movie? Yeah, you get two lines at the beginning of the movie. And that's about it. You, get, you don't get nothing for the entire rest of the movie. And narratively, structurally, intelligently, it makes no sense to include that at all. Either you have it throughout the entire movie or you don't have it at all. I'm sorry, I'm really trying to grasp at straws here because this movie presented nothing. Nothing for me to uh, uh, criticize and antagonize. Besides the story, which is still decent enough to make a movie out of it's just some of the side characters like the fairies and this little thing that goes meh, meh. It, it, they're just annoying and I, I just I, I it's a dumb movie I don't know what else you want me to say about that and one that I don't really think needed to be made but it exists and I'm not overtly mad about it but the biggest thing for this movie for me was that I think it opened up my eyes to Disney and how they were trying to keep everything rated PG and really go back on things and make it all kid and society friendly. If you know, George Lucas, not George Lucas, Steven Spielberg went back and edited uh, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. So the cops in the movies that we're chasing, Elliot and E.T., are not holding guns, they're holding walkie-talkies. In a sense, this movie does the same thing. Michelle Pfeiffer's character, who is the villain, uh, has lead balls made. And if you saw the first one, you know lead is deadly to fairies. It could seriously hurt them. It could kill them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose a suggestion. 
you're the queen and you want to kill these beings, do you, A, make lead arrowheads so when you shoot them, it goes through them and really hurts them, or B, do you make lead balls that you shoot out of crossbows, which crossbows are a lot harder to reload and load as compared to bow and arrow? Which one would you do? I'll tell you what Michelle Pfeiffer did. She made balls for some reason. It's Disney trying to pull the sheet over your eyes and hide what makes sense and what would actually happen in these worlds and just hide that. It was the same thing with uh, Nutcracker in the Four Realms last year. It's all about inclusion and making everything PC, politically correct. Everybody's got to be gay. Everybody. Oh, no, this now it's turning. I'm sorry. It's just. It, violence is violence. And if you're going to show people getting thrown 50 feet in the air or falling on their head. But then you're going to show them shooting lead balls at people trying to kill them that way. It just totally doesn't make sense. The There's a, a, a startling lack of violence in Maleficent and Maleficent Mistress of Evil. And it's Disney trying to wash over these things and pull the sheet over your eyes so you're not seeing what's actually there. You know that these people are being killed. You know that when you get thrown in the air, they're being killed. But no, we're going to use lead balls instead of arrows because that's so much more or less violent. Ooh, it's just... it's more. This is more of a personal nitpick, and I, I don't know why I even involved it because it really doesn't have any bearing on this movie. But the, the best part of the first one is Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. By far the best part of the movie. And she's hardly giving anything to do in this movie. She's barely there. It's two hours. And I feel like she was on screen for maybe 30 minutes. It's a real detriment to this film. It makes it all feel lackluster. The character is not imposing or cool anymore. Plus, she still has not turned into that goddamn dragon. The one thing I wanted to see. The one thing I thought we might get. She turns into a phoenix, but... You know, it's, it's not exactly the same thing as the original animated Sleeping Beauty movie where she actually turns into a dragon, where she's doing all this shit on her own, where she is menacing and scary and imposes a threat, but now she's been washed away of everything that was good or cool about her that made her evil, so she's a good guy, she's a hero, and it does not make sense tonally. 5.8 out of 10.